You're watching Council Wrap Up. We're here with some of the top council news for the month of October. It may not be something that most people think about, but the end of daylight saving time can mean a rise in the number of pedestrian accidents. The time change happens this year on November 1st, and Montgomery County Police want pedestrians and drivers to be aware. We realize that uh, we're in a time of the season uh, where we do see a rise in pedestrian collisions. So we, we try to combat that with education, enforcement, um, and we try to go proactive with things like this. Last year in Montgomery County, there were close to 500 pedestrian crashes. 14 of those were fatal. Statistics show that pedestrians walking around dusk are nearly three times more likely to be struck by cars in the days following the end of daylight saving time. Everybody has a role in traffic safety, pedestrians, bicyclists, and vehicles. As far as pedestrians are concerned, um, some easy steps are wear things that might be more visible when it gets darker out. Um, even to the extremes of wearing a vest, it, that could help. And I get that those are tough things to sometimes do for going to work and things like that, but um, trying to remain as visible as possible is one thing. Two, use sidewalks uh, when they're available and, and walk there and not in the roadway. And when you do have to cross the roadway, try to get to a lighted intersection or a marked crosswalk. And third, avoid distracted walking. Councilmember Evan Glass says with the time change that is happening, everybody needs to be aware of their surroundings. If you are a pedestrian, you know, maybe take the earbuds out, look around and just be aware of when you're crossing the street. I always try to make eye contact with the driver so that I know that we see each other. And let's see what we got here. We have one car stopped and another's going to keep going. You need courage to be able to do this. And it is so important because uh, we can't presume that drivers are seeing everybody who's on, on the street. Um, it's unfortunate to say, but that's just a reality. The county and state have invested in improving intersections with the installation of Hawk beacon signals and rapid flashing beacons. McBain says that folks should be aware that police will be out on the roads enforcing traffic laws to keep our streets safe. We do do enforcement for not only the pedestrian moves, but also um, more often we try to address um, enforcement with the drivers. And so we, like the intersection we are here at Turkey Branch Parkway, we go out and we start monitoring whether vehicles are stopping at these rapid flashing beacons um, and also if they're uh, stopping at, um, at the hawk signals. Um, and so uh, and in addition, sometimes we have officers posing as pedestrians and actually going out into the roadway. And when we see a violation, we uh, make the stop and cite it. So even though you're getting an extra hour of sleep, Councilmember Glass says to remember those extra Z's come with accountability. There is an extra responsibility, clearly, that pedestrians have to take. Um, but for drivers as well, please take your eyes away from your phone, away from your radio. Um, focus on the road and make sure that when you're in a heavily pedestrian area or anywhere, quite frankly, uh, that you are keeping your eye on the road and looking out for pedestrians. This month, the council introduced an appropriation that would invest $1.8 million to expand educational enrichment and equity hubs to support those students negatively impacted by distance learning. The funding was proposed by Councilmember Craig Rice, who chairs the council's Education and Culture Committee. And so having these hubs to be able to just provide that additional support that's necessary, whether it's homework help, whether it's just the guidance, whether it's just the comfort of being around somebody in person, all of those kinds of things are needed for some of our students who just are struggling with the distance learning model and it's really not working for them uh, that are going to help them to bridge the time until we can get our kids back in school. The Children's Opportunity Fund and the Black and Brown Coalition have partnered with county child care providers licensed by the state to deliver services in schools to implement educational enrichment and equity hubs. Currently, there are hubs in nine county elementary schools. The funding would expand the number of hub sites by at least 20 to those low-income students while schools meet virtually. 
one of the things we know is that there are pockets of kids of need throughout the county. There is not one area. They're not just in Silver Spring or in Wheaton or in Germantown or in Montgomery Village. The reality is, is that they're spread all around the county. This funding reflects the county's commitment to racial equity and social justice. The goal of the hubs is to provide virtual learning support to those vulnerable students who have been negatively impacted by the challenges of distance learning. A public hearing and action on this proposal is scheduled for November 10th. Over the last several months, Montgomery County residents have stepped up to help the community by lending a hand in many different ways. This month, we met a Gaithersburg couple working to build educational equity through their carpentry skills. Desks by Dads is a nonprofit organization that was started by a mom. So Desks by Dads is actually a brainchild of my wife, Jessica. In August, Jess Burrales partnered with PTA moms who were working on a virtual learning project. It was sort of in the mindset of thinking of, you know, about what do kids need to be ready to learn? And it just sort of occurred to me, well, what about desks? And Jess's Honeydew weekend project for her husband, Al, was for him to build a desk. He said, sure. He watched a couple YouTube videos and picked up some materials from Lowe's over the weekend and put a desk to together in about an hour. Just sort of took off from there. Took off it did. After posting pictures on Facebook, dads all over the county volunteered to help. Um, great to see how other people kind of take my idea and kind of ran with it and made it their own. That's really fun to see. We've had so many volunteers uh, improve on the design, you know, add their own spin on it. Uh, to be honest with you, each desk that we've received is a little nicer than the last one. So this is Mary Kate. And Women are also invited to this men's club. On this day, Mary Kate Ryan delivered the desks that Dallas made. Kate painted the desk. The desks are, I mean, they're fantastic. I love the colors. And her boyfriend, Mike. He, he's the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I, all I did was load him. At the first stop, Santiago and his mom, Anna, met the truck and Santiago got to pick his desk. I'll take this one. Which one, this one here? Yeah. He was working on the table inside for where we eat. Now I could, I don't have to sit at the table and do my work. I could have my own little space right there. Council member Hans Reamer met the group at the next stop. How was it with the last family? It's fantastic. We bought two small desks for our two kids because mm -hmm. yep. creating a defined workspace, it's good for the parents, it's good for the kids. It's, they weren't cheap. Yeah. Not everybody has 100, 200 bucks laying around. Generalmente tarda como una semana, pero es rápido y dan cuatro mil dólares. I'm also trying to share information resources about county resources that are available, like the COVID Rent Assistance Program. Okay, gracias. <laughs> He's gonna go call his brother. <laughs> so far, more than 120 desks have been built and distributed. This mom um, has some um, COVID symptoms, so we're not gonna have any contact. Each desk comes with a chair and a lamp. We're thrilled that we can help in a small way. We have no illusions that this is making a dent in all of the equity challenges that we face as a community. But it's making a real difference for the families that you serve, and that's yeah. what counts. Cheese! They, they really feel proud when they have their own space and they get to set it up and decorate it. It's really nice. If you would like to get involved with Desk by Dads, check their Facebook page for details. The coronavirus pandemic has revealed many inequities, one of those being in the area of mental health. School closures have affected all students, but for many of those young people, school is the main provider of mental health services. The council approved more than $860,000 to address the growing need for these services at elementary schools with high concentrations of poverty. Everybody's been working on this in their own space pre-COVID to say, hey, we need to do this which is why we put forth special appropriations to do this and why it's so important to do now because it's gotten worse. The services to be supported by the appropriation are targeted at schools that have 80 percent or more of students who are eligible for free and reduced price meals. ESOL services at those schools averages at 56 percent. The funding will provide three school community health nurses and additional contractual support for mental health services. The time has arrived for us to then have a strategy that is completely strategic in terms of how do we grow that pipeline, but also how do we have uh, how do we take advantage of innovative um, models that um, that can you know have folks that could be maybe assistants or that can provide that intermediary 
support while we're growing uh, licensed uh, mental health practitioners that reflect our student population. There's a new cafe in downtown Rockville that's open for business. We went with council president Sydney Katz to visit the Soulful Cafe where everyone has a place at the table. Tucked away on Monroe Place in Rockville is a little cafe that's full of positive energy. Oh, how are you doing? The Soulful Cafe is located just off the main entrance of the newly opened Main Street Apartments. The cafe is a partnership between Dawson's Market and Main Street. So Dawson's has always been uh, a part of the community. Uh, part of our mission statement is to, to employ 10% of our staff uh, in what we call a difficult to hire category, people that um, tend to have difficulty finding positions because of a disability, something like that. You know, just really right away felt that it was a great marriage between the two different missions and the two companies. The opening of the Main Street Cafe is not only about inclusion, but it also offers great taste. It's real good. Yeah. Yeah. Jillian Copeland is the founder of Main Street. She says the Soulful Cafe gives everyone the opportunity to nourish their mind, body, and soul. I got a club wrap and I got a double chocolate chip muffin. Our mission of creating a space for belonging, this is perfectly aligned, right? So bright spaces, um, air, the food and drink, really acai bowls and smoothies and coffees. Uh, a, a small cappuccino. Soon, so we hope pedestrians will walk by and we hope people will come and grab a cup of coffee and just, you know, say hello and be a neighbor and be a part of our community. And connecting with the community is what Main Street is all about. The cafe serves as a gathering place for county residents looking to support local food. What are you getting? A mean green smoothie. An almond brother. And residents and staff of Main Street use the cafe as home base and time to check in and find out how things are going. So I think it gives them kind of like a feeling of community as well as a space that they can hang out and enjoy and kind of kick back, relax and, you know, eat a muffin, have a coffee and, you know, just enjoy the day. Council President Sydney Katz says the Soulful Cafe is not only changing lives, but it's shaping the future. And Montgomery County has such, is so fortunate, truly is blessed that we have every opportunity to meet people from every background in, in, every, in every sort of way. And that's what this is all of about. We're all, you know, I always say that a community is like a family. And it is, and we, and in our family, we have various personalities and people who have various uh, abilities and, and, and are good in one thing and not so great in another. It, it's really just a, a wonderful, wonderful feeling. It's a place where people want to come and join. They don't want to be here because they're helping someone with a disability. They want to be here because they're stimulated and they're engaged and they're connected and they walk away and their life is richer because they filled their cup and they filled their soul. You can visit the Soulful Cafe at 50 Monroe Place in Rockville. The cafe is open every day except Sunday and Monday at 7 a.m. Well, that does it for this edition of Council Wrap-Up. To follow the County Council's work, visit their website. I'm Susan Kennedy. What do you do if you smell natural gas? A gas leak can happen if a gas pipe is damaged, if an appliance that uses gas isn't hooked up right, or if someone leaves a burner or the oven on. If you smell natural gas, don't try to find out where it's coming from. Just get out. From a safe location, call 911 and then your local gas company. If the odor is very strong or you hear something hissing, Leave the area immediately and warn other people as you go. Natural gas is highly flammable. Don't light a cigarette or use your phone or anything with batteries. Don't turn light switches on or off. Don't start your car. Don't do anything that could create a spark. Washington Gas's emergency number is 703-750-1400. Evacuate first. Call next. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science. After that, I'm going to get my law degree. Then I'm going to come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined. It's, it, it's going to happen. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend.